I'm just doing a quick tutorial on how to uh, create a game using Visual Basic Express. Uh, I'm going to try and make it simple so you shouldn't have any prior uh, programming experience before you try this but you'll need to install uh, Visual Basic 2010 Express to follow this tutorial. I'll also put on my site www.personalizeddevelopment.co.uk I'll put uh, some notes on there along with the videos and source code on there as well. So in case at any point during this tutorial you get stuck, uh, you can copy the code off there and try and catch up. Okay, first of all, once you've got Visual Basic Express installed, what you do is you go to New Project uh, and for this you can create a Windows Forms application but for this this tutorial I'm going to use a WPF browser application it's similar to a uh, Silverlight application it's very 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 similar um, and I'm going to call this I don't know, we'll call it my my first game okay WPF browser application on on our site we've got a few games down at the bottom these were these are both done in WPF uh, you'll be able to try them on the site and see what it looks like and see what you can actually sort of make out of it yourself um, all of the things on there are sort of moving objects uh, moving lights there and moving actors there with a the sword uh, and Silverlight is very similar, so again you could create online games like these these four games at the top here uh, using the similar methods to what I'm going to use here. Okay, so we'll create and call it, call it my first game. Okay, so this will create you a little platform to put, put your game in. This box here is actually what's going to appear when you run the game, either if you just run it among friends and just send them the send them the file or whatever or if you're actually going to uh, deploy it uh, to your website okay so first thing we're going to do is as you can see at the bottom down here we've got a bit of xaml code i'm not going to get into this too much uh, but we can change the design height and the design width from here you can also drag it down there and you can see those numbers change so we're going to make this 500 by 500 but obviously if you want to be if you want to be exactly 500 it's quite difficult to get it exactly right so we'll change that to 500 by 500 actually you're going to probably want it a little bit wider than you have it high so let's call it 640 by 500 okay let's move that out of the way so now what we want to do is we want to put something on our page so if we go to the properties part uh, and you click somewhere on the page you'll see a list of properties come up at the side if you've not got this there's a button up at the top here as it says f4 to get up the properties window to be able to see it but i've already got mine at the right so i'm going to set my entire background to be uh, an image okay so if we go down to you may have a different layout to this but under brushes uh, you can click on background you can see you've got a few different color colors you can choose from so you just move that around and it'll change the color of the image the color of the background of your page in case but I'm going to click on an image right and I need to select an image to create a new one so I'm going to select them from this location these are a few images that I just got earlier on I've used in a few of my games already uh, I'm going to make the background wooden so I just select the wo wooden file and it adds it to there press OK and now I've got my wooden background okay so now what I want to do is I want to add a few other interesting things on there. So what I'm going to do is I want to use everything as images. Uh, you can use buttons or just rectangles and just colour them in if you like. But obviously it's a bit more personal if you use images all over the place. Okay, so for basically we're going to the toolbox at the left, find this image and just drag it in to the form. Okay, now you'll see once you click the image, you've got a few properties inside there as well. And under the common part, you'll see source. Now this is what the where the image file is. So let's click on the uh, button next to it. Again, I need to add a new one because it's not in my project yet. But obviously once I've added one and I want to use it again, I can just select one that's already in the project to say it saves on space. So for this one, I'm going to choose the earth image, picture of the earth. Just a nice little image. Okay. So now you can see we've got a picture of Earth in there. Uh, I'll make that 50 by 50, so we've got a little planet on the side. Again, you can do this by XAML code to try and get it exactly right first time uh, because it's a little bit fiddly. Uh, there we go. 
50 by 50. So I've got a little earth image. Now you can also copy and paste that. Uh, if you right click and copy or control C and then, or, and then control V obviously to paste it. So now I've got two earth images. But that was just to save me going to the toolbox and doing it and setting the properties. If you've changed the properties of an image, sometimes easy to copy and paste. But I'm going to use the steels image now and add that. Okay. So I'm going to put obviously this right at the bottom because this is going to be our floor. Okay, so I did the floor into the bottom. I'll put our image a little bit above the floor. And for the page as well, we'll see how this looks now, but we're going to make a change to this in a second. You can press F5 to display it, or you can press the play button at the top. And what this will do is it, this will create your web page. It'll just take a few moments to load up, and then you'll be able to see what your page is going to look like. Now at the minute it's quite stretched and it's all across the screen, but as you can see, I've got the background, I've got the floor there, and I've got my earth image. Okay, so back to our program. We have to go back to the program and hit the stop button, and that'll take you back to your design mode. Okay, now the problem with the width of it is I need to make it all 500. If I've got uh, my design height of 500 and my design width at 640 then I'll also want to change the width here to 640 and this to 500 that's by clicking on the side of the page outside of it and that selects the page you've also got the grid in the center so click there and you can see there's a grid as well we're going to change these all to the same value by 500 and then see what it looks like because then it won't automatically change it or it shouldn't. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got it the right size we want it to be able to play our games in it. Okay, obviously nothing will happen at the minute, but the next tutorial will cover movements. Thank you.